Hi, Georgina. Is everything good, honey? Oh, hi, Mom. Yes, everything's great here. Thanks for asking. How have you and Dad been doing? Well, you know, everything's been pretty quiet as usual. Your dad is still working hard at the factory and I'm still enjoying my work at the library. By the way, you don't have to send us so much money every month. You know it's not obligatory. We really appreciate your thoughtfulness, but we can manage just fine on our own. I know my busy work schedule makes it hard to visit, but I want you to know that I'm thinking of you and dad all the time. Sending you money is the least I can do to help out. Our family is having a get together next Saturday. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. I know you're busy, but I still hope that you can make it. Your dad and I are really looking forward to seeing you. I'm really looking forward to the get together, but I'm worried about one thing. Is Everly gonna be there? We've had some disagreements in the past and I'm not sure if I can be in the same room as her. I've been trying to avoid Everly, so I've only been visiting you and dad whenever she's not home. I'm hoping that we can all work things out eventually, but until then, I think it's best if I keep my distance from her for now. I'm so sorry Everly made you feel that way. She's 24 and still acts like a child. Even your dad and I find her attitude intolerable. We did everything we could to prevent her from treating you badly. From reasoning with her, to confiscating her cell phone, assigning her household responsibilities. Unfortunately, all we have received in return are insincere apologies. Eventually, we had no choice but to force her to move out of the house. You know I'm deeply disappointed in Everly, but I can't seem to do anything to change her from the inside. It's okay, Mom. I totally understand. And I don't blame you for anything. You did the best you could, and I'm really thankful for that. Georgina, I'm so sorry that you felt like you had to leave our house. I know that I made a mistake in not taking stronger measures to punish Everly, and I feel guilty for that. I never wanted you to feel like you weren't safe or loved in our home. No, no, you did the right thing. You know what they say, you can't change someone who doesn't want to change. Everly insists on living life on her own terms, so there's nothing we can do about it. I know you've been avoiding Everly, but it's not healthy for you to keep running away from your problems. I think it's time you came back home and faced her. We'll be there to support you and we won't let her hurt you again. I promise. Honestly, our family hasn't been the same since you left. I'll do my best, Mom. But could you tell Everly in advance about my intended presence? You know, Everly is a little bit of a drama queen. I just want to make sure that Everly gets a heads up so that she can process the information and come to terms with it. Otherwise, I'm afraid she's going to make a scene and ruin everyone's mood. Oh yeah, of course. I'll explain everything to Everly and tell her to behave herself when you're around. Don't you worry about that, dear. Well, in that case, I believe I can attend our family's get-together next Saturday. <laughs> I'm so glad you're coming! I'm really looking forward to it. You know, it's been ages since we've all been together for dinner. I'll go to the supermarket and get the freshest ingredients I can to make your favorite dishes. Would you like beef stew with vegetables or roast chicken? I'm drooling just by thinking about the food you make. Thank you for remembering my eating preferences. I'm not a picky eater at all, but it's always so thoughtful of you to make sure I have something I'll enjoy. I'm already excited for our upcoming family dinner. Oh, thank you, darling. I'm so glad you're looking forward to it. I'll put my all into making it the best meal you've ever had. I can't wait to see the look on your face when you taste what I cook. I promise it'll be worth the wait. That sounds very promising, Mom. I'll bring a bottle of wine to toast our reunion. Georgina, I can't believe you're coming home next Saturday for dinner. After everything you've done, you have the nerve to show your face here? Oh, it's you, Everly. Yeah, I'm planning to go home that day because Mom said that there will be a get-together. So, how have you been doing all this time? Is everything okay? Of course everything's fine. It's even better since you left. Our parents and I are finally able to enjoy our lives without you being dead weight around the house. You made the right decision to move out, and I'm honestly surprised that you're even thinking of coming back. If you had any shame, you'd stay away from us. Or better yet, disappear from our lives altogether. Why are you trying to prevent me from visiting our parents? I'm their child, and I have every right to see them. Besides, it was mom who invited me, so I don't see why I should say no. After everything you've done, you still have the nerve to show your face? You got me in trouble with our parents and almost got me kicked out of school. 
And now you think you can just come back like nothing happened? Piss off, loser. No one wants you here. I thought after all these years you'd have learned your place, but it seems like you're still incredibly dumb like the last time we talked. I know you're going to make a big deal about this, but I'm not going to let you blame me for everything. You started it. You're the one who made fun of me in front of everyone at school, and you made my life miserable. You spread rumors about me, teased me, threw things at me, and called me names. And don't think I've forgotten how you took it upon yourself to steal and vandalize my clothes after gym class, drench my books with coke, or maliciously topple my cafeteria tray. I didn't have any other choice but to report you to our teacher and tell our parents. I couldn't believe that you could be so cruel to your own sister. Ugh, you filthy backstabbing snitch. What did I ever do that was wrong? I just did everyone a favor and helped a lard ass like you know where you belong in our society. You're so terribly fat that no one wants to have any association with you. What do you ever care about other than stuffing your mouth with as much food as possible? <laughs> if I'm honest with you, a fat tub of lard like you is an offense to everyone around you. Why are you still judging people based on their looks? That's so childish. If you keep doing that, you'll never get anywhere in life. What's wrong with the way I think? Being fat is a crime, and a butterball like you shouldn't even exist. Do you remember the class photos we took together? Your fat body took nearly half of the frame. You literally wrecked every photo you were in. That's why you were always forced to stand in the background like an idiot, while I got to stand in the front and shine like a true star. Seriously, you make me and our parents embarrassed whenever you walk side by side with us. I mean, who in their right mind would want to be accompanied by a walking whale? It's been years and you still act like a complete spoiled brat. You're not a child anymore. It's time to start acting like an adult. If anyone here is childish, it's you. You're only a fatso who can't even make it to college. You're only a high school graduate and it makes our family look really bad. It's not that my grades weren't enough to go to college. I chose not to advance my studies and focus on developing my career path instead. What's so wrong about that? Huh, nice try defending your sloppiness and incompetence, but you're not fooling anyone. Anyways, enough about that. I can go on and on all day about how much of a loser you are, but I don't have time for that nonsense. In fact, I'm going to cut to the chase right now. I don't want you to show up at our family's gathering on Sunday. Just do whatever you want, but don't make an appearance. No one wants you there, not our parents, and especially not me. Whether or not I join the family's get-together is none of your business. You don't have the right to tell me what to do or not. You're not my parent. I do whatever I want to, and I don't need your permission. Besides, what's wrong with me visiting my parents? Ugh, you're absolutely intolerable. Why are you pretending to care so much about our parents all of a sudden? It's been ages since you last saw them, and you couldn't even be bothered to visit them once since you moved out. And now you have the audacity to act like a saint and suggest joining us for dinner? For your information, just because I didn't tell you doesn't mean that I haven't visited our parents since I left, okay? Whatever. Listen, I simply don't have the time or interest to engage in aimless conversation with a total failure like yourself. Unfortunately for you, you're not allowed to attend our family dinner next Saturday because I've already extended an invitation to a highly significant guest. It's none other than John, the modeling agent from the company I'm about to sign a contract with. And in case you didn't already know, he also happens to be my fiance. <laughs> He's here to gain a deeper understanding of both me and our esteemed family. Oh, I see you've managed to secure a fiancé for yourself, have you? <laughs> of course. Unlike you, who's too busy being a slob, I always know how to take care of myself. It's only natural that I found such a catch like John. So, if you have any self-respect, you'd stay away from the gathering. Can you imagine a fatso like you as my sister meeting up with a modeling agent? <laughs> What would he think of me and our family? You're just gonna embarrass us all. Oh, so you're a model now? That's a surprise. Did mom know about it? Well, duh, of course, I'm a model. What else could I be? I was born for this. I was born to be in the spotlight. It would be a serious crime against fashion if I didn't pursue modeling. I mean, just look at me. I'm the epitome of beauty, brains, and grace. I'm everything a woman could ever dream of being. There's absolutely no reason why I shouldn't ascend to the heights of fame and become a renowned supermodel one day. 
It's practically inevitable. Oh, of course. You have model material running in your veins. However, there's one tiny little problem. What? What problem? Well, I was just wondering. It must be difficult to carry that massive ego with you while you strut down the catwalk, isn't it? What? Are you trying to mock me? I'm the only one who's allowed to do that. Anyway, what I'm asking of you is to stay away from me and my family as far as possible. Especially next Saturday. I don't care where you go, as long as it's far away from us. You could hide under the sea, deep in the jungle, or even on Mars. Just make sure that I don't see you, and neither does anyone else in my family. You've always wanted to prove yourself to be a worthy member of our family, right? Well, this is your chance to shine. Show us all how much you've changed by staying away from us. I don't understand why I have to do what you say. Mom told me to come, and I'm going to come because I don't want to disappoint her. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Seriously? Are you just plain stupid or are you deliberately ignoring my warning? It seems like that pool of grease you call a head can't store any more information, huh? Your brain is so sludgy with fat that you can't even think straight. How pathetic. I'm telling you, you need to lose some weight or else you'll be dumber than a box of rocks. Look, I just want to have a normal family dinner with our parents. I haven't had a home-cooked meal in ages, and I'm really looking forward to trying mom's cooking. You're so selfish and spoiled. Can't you just behave for once? How much more emotional damage do you want to cause us? Have a normal family dinner with our parents? Yuck, is eating all you ever care about? Do you know why I don't want to have dinner with you? It's because looking at you eating is a complete torture. In fact, I feel like I want to throw up just by the thought of it. I don't want the little appetite that I have to completely disappear at the sight of you. I mean, honestly, who in the right mind would want to sit in front of you watching your stomach jiggle as you shovel food in your mouth? Ugh, it's utterly repulsive. I'm surprised any chair would hold you up. It's 100% sure that they would surely collapse under your weight. It's time for you to wake up and face reality. No one can stand the sight of you. It's like my eyes are gonna get fat just by looking at you. Can you please stop with your cruel words? It's enough already. Do you think making personal attacks on someone's appearance is gonna make you above anyone? No, it will not. It's only gonna show how ugly your personality is. Oh, you think what I said is cruel? I think it's nothing compared to what other people really think of you. I'm just speaking what normal people actually feel when they look at you. Be strong. You need this fat shaming to drive you into depression and make you stop eating so you can lose some of that weight. I have a brilliant idea. Why don't you just stop eating human's food and start eating pig feed instead? It's the perfect source of food for you. It's so fattening and unhealthy just like you. I'm sure you'll love it. Oh, why don't you go to a pig farm and live there already? All you have to do is lounge around and they'll pour the feed in there for you. <laughs> How convenient. That's where fat sows like you truly belong. Oh yeah? You think you're so good yourself, huh? All those clothes and makeup aren't enough to hide your detestable personality. Honestly, you look like a clown with all that lipstick, eyeshadow, and fake eyelashes. I wonder if it's difficult to walk around with one pound of that cream, powder, and lipstick on your face. If I were you, I would stop wearing too much makeup. It doesn't fit your age. Oh, really? Have you ever taken a good look at yourself in the mirror? How do you manage to survive with a body like that? I bet your throat must be so constricted due to the excessive fat coursing through your veins. If I were in your position, I'd rather choose to starve myself to death rather than endure a life where I'm constantly subjected to ridicule and animosity, much like you are at present. I suspect the only form of exercise you engage in is the movement of your swollen mouth as you devour junk food, right? But even if a hunk of lard like you ever lost some weight, you'd never become any more beautiful. All you'll get is saggy skin all over your body. You know what? Talking to you makes my brain rot. I don't think we have any more reasons to talk to each other anymore. Don't think you can convince me not to come to dinner next Saturday. I will come, despite all of your insults and hateful words. I tried to avoid having any contact with you, but I guess I can't anymore. I'm going to block your number from now on, and we'll talk face-to-face -face at the get-together next Saturday. Hey, is this the number of the biggest loser in the world, Georgina? 
<laughs> I bet you haven't changed a bit all these years, haven't you? Still a fat walking dump truck. And who are you exactly? Who do you think you are to talk to me in that kind of manner? Well, how could you forget me so soon, fatso? I'm Gavin, your one and only high school nightmare. So, is it good to talk with an old friend again? G gavin How do you know my number? I found your number in Everly's phone. Do you know what your sister saved your name as on her phone? Dumb ass hunk of lard. <laughs> Jeez, that was a clever rhyme. Everly should be a poet with lines like that. It still remains a mystery to me as to why you two are related by flesh and blood. Seriously, you and Everly are like chalk and cheese. Everly is so hot and beautiful, with the body of an angel. You're nothing but a walking fat dumpster compared to her. Why are you contacting me all of a sudden, Gavin? Who are you to my sister? I'm her boyfriend, you worthless piece of trash. Well, Everly and I are getting engaged soon, so I guess I have to begrudgingly acknowledge your existence now that you'll be my sister-in-law. I mean, it's not like I have a choice, right? What did you say, Gavin? You're Everly's boyfriend and you two will get engaged soon? Well, that's unexpected. What's so surprising? I know you're green with envy, being forced to see two of the hottest people on earth come into union. But that's okay. Just cry your eyes out and hide under the table. Like you always did back in high school. <laughs> green with envy? Oh, please. Even a drunk clown can make a better joke than that. Oh, Georgina, I'm sure you're still cherishing the memories of your high school years. All those awkward moments, the bullying, the feeling of being like an outsider, those were the days, weren't they? Remember, I'm the bully and you'll always be my little prey. Oh, how I enjoy kicking your fat ass and making you beg on your knees. But hey, with that fat piled up on your body after all these years, I don't think you could even bend down anymore. Oh, please, spare me your threats, little boy. The only thing you're threatening is my patience. I still remember how you cried like a baby when you got expelled from high school. And I still remember how you begged me and the principal for forgiveness. It was a real treat for the eyes to see you so miserable, holding onto my legs and dragging yourself on the floor. Some good old days, don't you think? What did you say to me, you freaking retard? Now you want to reminisce about the good old days, huh? How about the time you were thrown rocks at, spit on, and forced to eat a hamburger filled with dirt? What about the time you were tripped and fell flat on your face, covered in mud? You thought you won by getting me expelled from high school, huh? Nah, think again. You know what they say. Once a loser, always a loser. You're just as despicable as my sister. You two are definitely a heaven-made couple. Why am I not surprised that Everly ended up with a piece of trash like you? Yeah, keep on throwing those little punches if it makes you feel like the winner. Oh please, spare me your hilarious punchlines. They're about as funny as a wet fart, and your personality is about as interesting as a brick wall. Oh Gavin, I'm so dying to relive the beautiful memories of our good old days in high school. You know, like the time you threw my backpack in the mud, or the time you spread rumors about me. Those were the best times. So how about this? We're having a cozy family get-together at my house next Saturday. Why don't you come and join us? Everyone will be there, including Everly. I know you're eager to introduce yourself to my parents, right? Really? That's a freaking amazing idea. I was wondering darn what is taking Everly so long to introduce me to her parents, but now it's all good. So, next Saturday it is. Send me the time and address and I'll be there. <laughs> Hey Georgina, why didn't you tell me more about yourself before our family's gathering? I was totally caught off guard. I never thought you would become this successful. I didn't even know that your husband is actually the CEO of the company that I was trying to strike a modeling contract with. You're such a lucky girl, Georgina. Your husband has literally everything that every girl dreams of. Yeah, thanks. I'll be sure to pass on your words to my husband. And I didn't know that you could change that much. Look at you now. You're absolutely stunning with that perfectly shaped body of yours. I didn't even know that you became a fitness model. You not only lost weight, but you also gained muscle and you, you even have abs. I'm so jealous of you, Georgina. 
I wish I could be just like you. You know what? You are the epitome of beauty. You are so radiant and flawless, it's like you stepped out of a dream. I'm so inspired by your beauty and your dedication to fitness. You truly are an inspiration to us all. Oh, now I suddenly became the epitome of beauty for you? I remember just a few days ago, someone was calling me all kinds of names, insulting me for being fat and all. And don't even think that I forgot how you tormented me throughout my school life. What's with the sudden change of attitude? Oh, you know I was just joking with you, right? You don't have to be so serious all the time. Look, all I did was just try to help strengthen our bond as sisters. I know you wouldn't be so despicable as to hold a grudge against me for such a long time, right? And don't tell me you didn't find my jokes about you funny. They're hilarious, and they keep everyone entertained. Well, I don't see them funny at all. So why don't you keep those jokes to yourself? Georgina, please. You're the only one who can help me. You know how kind-hearted you are, and I know you'd never want to see me fail. My whole life I've dreamed of becoming a successful model. I've worked so hard to get where I am, and now my dream is within reach. But your husband, he mercilessly declined me. He doesn't want to sign a contract with me. I know he doesn't like me, but I don't understand why he's being so cruel. I've never done anything to hurt him. Please, Georgina, talk to him. Please tell him how much this means to me. I'm begging you. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. My husband doesn't see the model material in you, and he's not very fond of your entitled and self-centered personality either. Not only that, he's furious to hear that you're the one who's been putting me down and making fun of me for my weight for all these years. As someone who truly values professionalism and kindness, my husband has decided that you're not qualified to become a part of his company's model team. No way! That's simply not fair at all! What do other models have that I can't offer? I have everything. The look, the face, the body. I'm so hot, I could melt the sun! Your husband is making a huge mistake by not signing a contract with me. Well, there's one thing you're missing. The decency of a normal human being. And besides, as my husband so kindly pointed out to you, you clearly don't have the skills of a model. So why don't you just admit that you're not fit for this industry? Oh, how dare you! I refuse to accept this. I'm gonna sue your husband for everything he's worth. You and your husband are both equally stupid and useless. I don't need people like you in my life. I'm gonna find a new company that truly values my talent. Oh, don't forget to say hi to Gavin on my behalf. It was nice to finally catch up with him after all this time. He's just as humorous as always when he texted me the other day. What? Gavin texted you? That's right. And I also happened to invite him to our family's gathering on Saturday. You know, he claimed to be your boyfriend and soon to be fiance. So I thought it would be nice of me if I invited him to join us. So I did. You what? You invited Gavin? So you're the one who orchestrated everything? You saw for yourself how angry Gavin was when he saw me with John. They even got into a fight. Now they all left me and it's all because of you. You should really be ashamed of yourself, Georgina. Well, it's not entirely my fault, you know. In fact, all I did was just doing Gavin and John a favor by exposing your true self. If you hadn't cheated on them both, none of that would have happened. You know what they say. Karma doesn't happen without reason. And now, it seems like you're savoring the ripe fruit of your own malevolent deeds. In the face of her failure, Everly refused to accept defeat. Instead, she devised a cunning scheme to coerce my husband into signing a contract and securing her a coveted modeling position. On our way home, they intercepted us, obstructing our path and resorting to threats of violence. Fortunately, a vigilant police officer caught wind of the situation, leading to the apprehension and subsequent arrest of Everly. My husband and I continue to flourish on our respective career paths, and we are overjoyed to announce that we are expecting a child by the end of this year. Although the lingering memories of Everly's and Gavin's bullying still cast their shadow, they have also served as catalysts for personal growth and the development of inner strength enabling me to confront and triumph over life's storms with unwavering resilience.